Last week, we got our second to last episode of Apple TV Plus, Defending Jacob, episode seven titled Job. And boy, did we get a lot of big reveals. And that's exactly what this video is about. I'm going to talk about those big moments and what they can mean for this week's finale. Talk about some of my theories. Talk about some of your comments and your theories. We're going to talk about all that and much more. What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to my channel, Movie Files. Elliot here today to do a very interesting and a kind of a discussion video about one of my favorite shows so far this year, and that is Defending Jacob on Apple TV+. Plus. We have the finale this week, and I wanted to make this video to have a discussion with you all. But before we dive into it, as you can see on the screen now, make sure you're following me on all my other social media accounts. If you're new to this channel, definitely consider subscribing. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my new content. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. really helps out the channel, but also really appreciate it. And and this is a discussion piece, so all your comments, I will read them out. I will keep those comments in mind for this week's finale, which of course I'll be reviewing. So again, the purpose of this video is to talk a little bit more about those reveals that we got last week's episode, how can they affect this this week's finale, and just kind of having a fun video. Again, this is all about you guys interacting with this video, your comments, your theories, your thoughts. Again, as I had mentioned, Seven weeks ago, I haven't read the books. I haven't Wikipedia how it's going to end. And a lot of you guys have done a, such a fantastic job. For those that have read the book, you haven't spoiled anything. So this is a strictly about what we know seven episodes into this show and going into this week's finale about all my thoughts, my theories, and about last week's episode. So again, if you've read the book, do not spoil anything. Uh, and again, if you haven't seen this week's past episode, episode seven, you shouldn't watch this video. Definitely go watch that. Watch my review for episode seven and then watch this kind of discussion discussion piece. So kind of starting off again, I just want to talk about those big reveals that we got last week, starting off with something that I had noted in my last week's review, episode seven job uh, episode review was the hatred. Now we've been seeing the hatred for Andy by Neil all season, but this particular last week's episode when they were in the court and the trial and everything, it seemed like there was just some something a little bit there, right? Some extra layer of kind of a, a, a hatred towards Andy. And in you guys, in the comments last week, some of you all had mentioned that there's some theories that you guys think that maybe there's something a little bit deeper between maybe Lori and Neil's past relationship. Maybe Neil and Lori knew each other before Andy and Lori got married. Maybe there was a potential affair that could have been in the mix. Again, that scene, which I'll talk about later in this uh, discussion piece, where we see Lori and Andy talking and happening, not, not talking, but arguing in the kitchen about the trial and everything about their marriage. Andy had said something about their marriage was built on a lie. So again, this isn't my theory, but someone had a couple people mention in, in the comments last week that they think that there's something a little bit deeper and a little bit more connective tissue between maybe Neil and Lori. Let me know if you guys are on that same beat, or like I had mentioned in my review last week, is it maybe just a matter of Neil just wants to be better than Andy. You know, Andy was the one that brought him up in regards to, you know, we saw the last the flashback last week with him kind of giving him notes and some advice. So maybe it's just a simple matter of ego and wanting to be better than him. Or like I said, with some of those comments last week, maybe there's something a little bit more deeper. But again, let me know what you guys are thinking about Neil. And if we're going to get a, a reveal of, of Neil and maybe Lori and, and Andy and why he has this type of hatred towards him. But again, let me know you guys' thoughts in the comments. But one of the bigger reveals that we got last week in this is where I'm going to kind of start this piece off in regards to just theories and thinking of what's going to happen this week's finale. You know, we, we found out a big reveal. You know, Derek took took the stand and told everyone about um, Jacob's website, the Cutter website and the story that he wrote. And not just, you know, a, a story about fantasizing about killing Ben, but the graphic details that he gave about stabbing him, how easy it was, how he got away with it, how he washed his hands with the blood and the knife, and how he just kind of went about the whole situation. And again, there's a little bit of merit of, you know, they had mentioned in the episode that maybe Jacob had heard the details of the murder uh, via the news because it was three days after his death that the story was posted. So there is a little bit of like, sure, that could be the case. But again, and, and we've seen this by Jacob in regards to, to be blunt, his stupidity of handling everything with social media, the Patrick Bates or Patrick picture that he posted on his whatever the website they're using, I assume is like Instagram, but he had posted himself as the American Psycho character played by Christian Bale. So there is precedent being set that Jacob sometimes makes some irrational decisions. And that posting that story on that website is definitely a dumb and irrational decision by him. So there is some precedent being set that he could have just wrote that story and just used the details that he found online to put it in his stories or as I had mentioned in my review that 
I mean, guys, the possibility of Jacob being the murderer is is could be pretty high. You know, I said it last week that I think he did it. But I, again, reading you guys' comments, which again, I've have, have had such a great time reading the comments, interacting with you all. But a lot of you all are just like, I don't think Jacob's capable of killing that kid. Sure, there's some evidence there, but I don't think he did it. And we'll talk about maybe the possibility of not only Jacob being involved, but some other characters. But that was just such a huge moment in regards to that website, that Cutter website, that the, the, the graphic detail in that story really was kind of uh, outstanding kind of evidence for me that Jacob, if he didn't kill Ben, there is some connected tissue with him being baby connected to the death of Ben. And we'll talk about that here in a bit. But let me know what you guys thought about that cutter room story and where you guys are at with Jacob regarding that the graphic detail of that story that he wrote online. So another thing that I wanted to bring up was Andy asked Jacob, and this to me, as I had mentioned in my review, again, check out my review for episode seven, but this was a one of the biggest, if not the biggest moment of the show thus far, and that was Andy finally questioning Jacob, flat out asking him, did you do it? Now, the reason I say that's, if not the biggest moment, one of the biggest moments is because as we've all been saying this last seven weeks, you could show Andy evidence of Jacob killing Ben and Andy would somehow, someone said in the comments, Andy would somehow make it up that it wasn't him. The tape was, you know, messed with and this, that, and the other, because he was just so gun ho on proving the innocence of his son. And I had actually mentioned, or maybe I didn't mention in my review, but I think it's just a matter of Andy cannot stand or stomach the idea that his son is a murderer because it connects him to his dad, Billy. And obviously there's that connective tissue, there's that trauma, there's that memory of that. So I think that was really the driving force of why Andy was just so gun ho on his son being innocent. Again, it's his son. He raised him. He thinks he knows his son and what his son's capable of. But as this season has shown, there's a lot of things that he's not aware of about his son. And that's just in any real life situation, there's people that think they know someone and they really don't. So there's that aspect of the story. But I thought that that moment was so huge. And again, we kind of dissected that scene last week. But the fact that when Jacob was asked that question, he looked at his dad. And I said it in my review, I took it more as like he was he was just trying to put it on face, if you want to call it that. But a lot of you all have mentioned in the comments that it was more of him just being shocked that his dad, the person that's been there, kind of rooting for him and being on his side, kind of was on the other side of the fence. So that was such a pivotal scene, such a well-acted scene. But to me, that was so huge because, again, Andy was just so set on his son being an innocent, and he had that one moment of slippage and, and asking him the question that we all want to know, did you do it? So let me know again what you guys thought about that scene and kind of how you thought that Jacob took that information, how Andy felt in that moment, and let me know your thoughts on that. So another big thing, too, in the episode – that I wanted to highlight uh, was going back to that, actually. And this is just kind of funny in the comments. Someone had mentioned that no way it can be Jacob because of the, I'm not going to say what the theory is, but if you guys have seen Knives Out and if you heard what Ryan Johnson said about particular characters and what kind of phone they use, check out that research and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. They said, no, Jacob can't do it because of something that he has. He can't be the bad guy. If you guys know what I'm talking about, you know what I mean there. So anyway, going back to another big moment, Lori and Andy's big fight. Again, going back to that thing that I talked about earlier with Neil and Lori, when Andy said our relationship and our marriage is built on a lie, is there some connective tissue there? Also, we haven't learned much about Lori's family history. Not everyone has to be their father or mother was a murderer in the past. You know, not everyone has to have a drama-filled childhood, but I wonder... Is there something there with Lori and her backstory and her upbringing? And if anything's connected there, could she be connected to the gentleman in the car? The O'Leary character, does Lori, maybe, does she know him, maybe? I mean, obviously, not know him, but is, she, is he connected to her family and if she doesn't know it? Uh, there might be something there. But again, I thought that that scene was so well acted between Lori and Andy. And again, the whole marriage is a lie. And obviously, we've known for weeks that Lori has been on the side of her son not being innocent and potentially being guilty. But I thought that, that scene was so telling because, again, the whole uh, I hope that we learn more about that when Andy said our marriage was built on a lie. Let me know what you guys think about that. Is it connected to Neil? Is it connected to something else in regards to their marriage? You know, the father of Jacob, potentially. I don't know if that's something they're going to touch on, but let me know what you guys are thinking with that big scene there. So another big moment and probably one of the biggest moments of the show was definitely the moment where Leonard 
has his confession. So we see him shaking, trembling, crying, and he writes on the back of the subpoena that, you know, he's writing a letter to Ben's parents saying that he did it. I had made a theory last week that I think that that O'Leary character was hired by Billy to force him to say those words, to force him to confess to something that he potentially did not do. And the reason I said that is because if you guys remember the scene where Billy called Andy, he asked Andy, are you sure you think that this Pats, this Leonard character is the one that did it? And obviously Andy said, yes, I do think he is. And I th took that as a sign as Billy calling his O'Leary friend. I don't know what kind of connection Billy had back in the day. Maybe he was in a mob, which I'm going to talk about here in a bit. But maybe there's some connection there. And there's something that maybe O'Leary O'Leary owes Billy. Now, stick with me on this theory. Could it be possible that Billy took the fall for someone in the mafia for killing that girl? And this is kind of like, hey, you owe me one. I need you to make sure that my grandson is innocent of this trial because I took that fall for the murdering of however long ago that was. Let me know if you guys are thinking that or if it's a simple thing like Billy wasn't a mafia. He called O'Leary and said, hey, make him say that he did it regardless if he did it or not. Or again, is O'Leary even connected to Billy? But I think he is. But let me know you guys' thoughts on Billy and the mafia owing him a favor. Billy hiring O'Leary to threaten Pat's. Pat's maybe not being threatened at all and just confessing. Let me know what you guys are thinking there. And then kind of last but not least, wrapping up this kind of discussion theory piece, if you want to call it that, um, Sarah, Sarah's involvement, uh, Jacob's involvement, and Derek's involvement. To me, they all have motives. I wouldn't say necessarily to kill Ben, but have motives to maybe hide something that they're not telling everyone else. And particularly, we know the connection between Ben and Sarah that we found out in episode six with the whole, you know, blackmailing situation. We know the situation between Ben and Jacob, you know, making fun of him, bullying him. And then the whole Derek. Derek is the one that's defending Sarah, but there isn't really a correlation between Ben and wanting to or, or I should say Derek wanting to kill Ben outside of just protecting Sarah so I don't know if all three of them are in, in cahoots with each other if they are covering something up a lot of people made a theory last week in the comments that could Sarah have been the killer and they're both covering for her because they both love her I assume a young love make you do anything right or another thing that someone brought up was and this is something I really didn't think about but it could be a possibility could it be that Ben's father actually killed him again there's been some kind of someone in the comments last couple weeks that said hey his dad's been acting kind of weird I think of last week's episode when he walked out of the trial and, and, and was thinking that Neil wasn't pushing hard enough to show that you know Jacob was the killer and there's been you know conversations about when he was in the room and kind of how he's handled the situation do you guys think that Ben's dad could potentially be the one that killed him reasoning we don't know why we don't know why he would do that um, but let me know what you guys think about Ben's father so outside of that last thing I want to bring up was the flash for trial that we've been seeing throughout the season in regards to where's Lori can Lori someone had mentioned in the comments could it be possible I don't know if this is possible but someone had mentioned I just want to bring it up that someone had mentioned in the comments that could Jacob have the capacity have the ability to kill his mom Reason being, the person in the comments, I can't really remember exactly why they think that they that he would have killed his mom, other than being upset with her and not her no her not having his side. I don't see him going that far. But again, if he killed Ben, then he's capable of anything, right? So let me know what you guys are thinking about that. Is it possible that they just got a divorce? I've been saying this since day one that I think that this trial is going to put a really big strain on their relationship in regards to Annie and Jacob. Could she just been moved from town, moved on with her life, uh, maybe? got together with her old fling neil potentially who knows uh and also you know is jacob in jail did jacob kill himself um who knows so again those are just theories comments you know re uh, reacting to you guys' theories and comments and i just have such a great time talking with you all again these last seven weeks watching the show this has been one of my favorite shows on apple tv plus platform which again if you're new to my channel i've re reviewed probably there's been like I want to say 12 shows. I've reviewed about seven of them, so definitely check out all my Apple TV content. But this has been up there in regards to this show, Servant, The Morning Show, uh, C, uh, Dickinson. I really have enjoyed the, the stuff that I've been seeing on the platform, so I've had such a great time talking with you all. So again, like, share, comment, subscribe. Make sure you let me know your thoughts, your theories. Uh, I will be reviewing this finale. Uh, I might even do like a watch along over the weekend if you guys really want to do that, if it's something you guys are interested in. Uh, but I'm really having a great time with the show, and I can't wait to find out if any of those theories I had mentioned come true. But outside of that, make sure you guys hit that notification 
notification bell because I have a lot of things coming this weekend with Netflix reviews like Space Force. I'm going to have my very first live Q&A, Ask Me Anything, this Saturday, May 30th, 3 p.m. Central Time. So make sure you leave your questions in the uh, community tab, the post I made. I'm also on Instagram, so you can let me know your questions there. Or if you have the time, tune in to the live stream. Let's have some fun discussion. So again, can't wait for the finale. Thank you all for watching this video, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>